Okay, so before we actually get into vector statics problems, it's probably a good idea to define what vector statics is. When I define vector statics, I'm actually gonna do this a little backwards. I'm gonna define what statics is first, and then I'll talk about the importance of it being in vector form or the vector part of vector statics. So to start off, let's figure out what statics is. So just statics, what, what does statics mean? Well, statics is the study of physical systems in static equilibrium. Now, there are two kind of big parts of this definition or two important things in this definition. The first is physical systems right here. And the second is static equilibrium. So we'll talk about both and why they're important in statics so that we can fully understand the definition of vector statics. So when we say physical systems, the study of physical systems, what we're talking about is mass bodies and how forces interact with those mass bodies. So it's really the study of forces and mass bodies working together to create a physical system. Now, more importantly, this thing called static equilibrium. Well, what does static equilibrium mean? Well, it means that the physical system or the mass or the object that we're studying where all these forces are being exerted onto, it means that that object is either at rest or that it's moving at a constant velocity. So it's either at rest or it's moving at a constant velocity. So when we say that this object is at rest, it means that the velocity of that object is zero. But more importantly, it also means that the acceleration is also zero. Now, when we say that the object is at rest or it's moving at a constant velocity, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that the velocity is not equal to zero. However, because it's moving at a constant velocity, in other words, the velocity isn't changing over time, it also means that the acceleration for an object moving at constant velocity is zero, right? If an object is not accelerating, it's not changing velocity. So even though that the velocity is non-zero, so there is a velocity, which means the object is moving relative to a reference frame, its acceleration is zero because the velocity is constant. Now, in both of these kind of sub-definitions, when something is at rest or something's moving at a constant velocity, there is a difference in velocity, right? In the first case, velocity is zero. In the second case, velocity is not zero. However, you can see that the acceleration is zero for both cases. So the most important takeaway here is that when we study systems that are in static equilibrium, the acceleration is always equal to zero. That's what defines statics. That's what defines this physical system to be in static equilibrium. It means that the acceleration is zero. Okay, so now things get a little interesting, right? So if you're familiar with Newton's law, Newton's, I believe, second law, the general kind of definition of that second law is F equals MA. So you have some sort of a mass body that's experienced some sort of an acceleration, and then you have all the forces that are acting onto that object. Now, if we said that we're studying a particular system that is in static equilibrium, in other words, the acceleration is zero, you'll notice that, well, if A is zero, acceleration is zero, then this formula becomes F equals zero. The forces are equal to zero. Now, that's that's really, really interesting. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you had some sort of an object here and you had a bunch of forces on it, right? They're, these are external forces that are acting on this object. It means that the sum of all those forces need to equal zero in order for this object right here to be in static equilibrium. And again, this object right here could be at rest or it could be moving at a constant velocity so long as the acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, then this object is in static equilibrium. So in this example right here, we do have a bunch of multiple forces, a lot of different forces. And really, these could be any arbitrary number of forces. But the main concept here, the main thing to remember is that the sum of those forces need to equal zero in order for this object to remain in static equilibrium. And this right here is one of the most important equations in the study of static. So this is part of the kind of grand picture. But again, this is probably the most fundamental thing in vector statics.
Okay, so now you might be thinking, well, if you have this object that is in static equilibrium, which means its acceleration is zero, and you have all these forces acting in all sorts of different directions, and you know some are pushing the object, some are pulling the object, aren't those directions kind of important? Don't we need to study which way those forces are oriented and how they're being exerted onto the object? Are they going towards the center of mass? Are they going away from the center of mass? Aren't all those quantities important? Well, the answer is yes. And that's where we get into kind of the second part of this definition for vector statics. And that is the vector part. What is a vector, right? Vectors are mathematical quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction. And they are paramount in studying vector statics because we need to, one, understand that all the forces on that object are equal to zero. And in order to be able to study that physical system and all the forces that are interacting with that object, we need to know the directions of all those forces because then we can go and break those forces down into similar components and analyze them and do the math and then figure out what the heck is actually happening to this object. So I think that's a good segue into kind of the vector part of this definition. So let's let's define vectors here, right? So vectors simply are mathematical quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction. So let's say you had an object, let's say you had a box here sitting on the ground and it was just at rest. And then you come to this box and you apply a force, you start tugging it, you start pulling it. Now this force vector that I've drawn here is some sort of a force that you've applied to this box. And you notice that it is a certain angle above the horizontal, right? So here's the horizontal line and you see that there's a bit of an angle here and you're not applying the force exactly on the horizontal. It's up and to the right a little bit. It has a bit of a vertical component here, right? So when we represent this force in a statics problem, again, we have to make sure that these forces are represented as vectors because both the magnitude of that force, how much that force is, and the direction, which is the orientation in which that force is applied, are both important in the study of statics. So this vector right here, let's say the horizontal line is right here, it's uh, being applied at some angle, which I'll call theta, and let's just say that theta was, I don't know, 20 degrees. So now, all of a sudden, we've defined this force to be a vector. We've represented this force as a vector. Now, remember, vectors have both a magnitude and a direction. So if I were to just draw this same force vector off to the side here, just like that, I would say that the magnitude of this force, I don't know, we could say it's maybe um, the, the force, the magnitude of the force is, let's say 3.2 newtons. So you're applying a force of 3.2 newtons onto this box. And the angle that this force vector makes with the horizontal is, again, theta equals 20 degrees. So what this means is that the magnitude or the length of this vector is going to be 3.2 newtons. And the direction or the orientation in which this force is applied is going to be theta equals 20 degrees from the horizontal. So with this information right here, we just represented our very first force vector. So we could say that this force vector, and I'm going to draw a little arrow over it to denote that it, it is a vector. This force vector is 3.2 newtons at a theta of 20 degrees. And so this right here is the vector representation of the force that we applied onto this box as we were pulling it to the right. And again, the reason why representing forces in vector statics as vectors is so important is because we need to study their magnitudes and we need to study their directions. And that is how we are able to analyze these physical systems in static equilibrium.